Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. The title defense starts today for number five, South Carolina, and there's a new banner in the Raptors at Colonial Life Arena. South Carolina finishing the season as the unanimous number one team in the nation last year. They've got a banner to remind everybody about that amazing season. They went undefeated in SEC play, won the SEC tournament, and went 5-0 and against top 10 teams. We welcome you to Columbia. Courtney Lau alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. And it was a historic year last year for South Carolina. But now SEC play starts again and they've got to flip the script. Well, they've got the majority of the team back. They lost two seniors in Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan that went on to the WNBA. But you remember that number one recruiting class, freshman class that played last year? All of them are back and they're sophomores now. And leading the way is Zaya Cook. And remember, earlier this season, they lost to NC State, and Zaya Cook was the first player to reach out to Don Staley and said, hey, coach, what do I need to do? And Don Staley talked to her and challenged her to up her game and understand it's not just her scoring, but her decision-making. She has to play more mature on the court. And you can tell over the last two games, her production has definitely gone up efficient. She's averaging 21 points a game she's shooting 69 percent from three that's nine of 13 from the three-point line so the Gamecocks really can look to Zaya Cook to up the ante meanwhile for, for this Florida, it's season. Kiki Smith leading things for this Gators team this is a senior point guard that has really grown into her role you always love the motor of Kiki Smith you also like the way that she distributes the basketball. What, what she has really added to her game is the confidence of which she can score. She knows when she needs to call her own number. So the Florida Gators will definitely go as Kiki Smith goes. She leads the team in points per game, assists per game, and steals per game. You said it. She directs the traffic, drives the ship for this Florida Gators team, and they look the best they ever have under Cam Newbauer in his fourth season. Pretty tall task, though, for these Florida Gators to face the number five team in the nation to start SEC play. And they'll do it on South Carolina's home floor. It'll be interesting to see the height advantage that South Carolina has. Will they try to pound the ball inside in the paint or take the open perimeter shots when they're open? Aaliyah Boston is double teamed down low by the Gators. Faith Dute along with Christina Moore there. Bree Beal cutting to the basket. So much focus is put on Aaliyah Boston, Zaya Cook. It's going to be the others, the Bree Bill, Destiny Henderson. How are they going to be able to provide some offense? Starting five you see there for Florida. This is Faith Dute, and it goes out of bounds off of South Carolina. It will stay with the Gators. Florida has stuck with the starting lineup. They're 7-1, and one. and just watching this team on film, Carolyn, it's, they're the best they've looked under Cam Newbauer. Well, they have balance, and... Cam Neubauer talked about how these, this team has really learned how to play with each other. They know each other's strengths. One of the things, a statement that he made is that he has players now at Florida that came there to win, not just to get playing time. For South Carolina, you'll notice Victoria Saxton back in the starting lineup. She didn't start their last game before Christmas because she missed some practice time due to a death in the family. She did play in that game, but she's been in addition to this starting lineup because, of course, Kiki Herbert Harrigan is gone. She's graduated, so Saxton has stepped in. What I love about Victoria Saxton's game is shot blocking. I hope we see lots of that because her timing is perfect. Zaya Cook between the double team in traffic, scores anyway. She can just score. She finds a way. A lot of times you think that's a four shot, but she finds a way to get the ball in the basket. This is Lavender Briggs who kicks out to Moore. Kiki Smith for three. Great box out by Aaliyah Boston. What's the difference you've seen in the South Carolina team since that NC State loss? Well, I think there's a trust and, two, a confidence. Like that shot right there, that's a good shot for Bree Bill. In the NC State game, there was hesitancy of taking that shot from the perimeter. 
as you've seen the only loss so far for South Carolina. They have picked up wins in their last two games since then over a ranked Iowa State team and then most recently Temple. This is the first game for Carolina in 14 days though. Third chance for the Gamecocks. Kiki Smith. Transition. That's where South Florida Carolina has so been good. able to have so much success in the early part of the non-conference season was getting out and running, scoring in transition. This will be Florida ball, Christina Moore to inbound. Gators still looking for their first points. Florida was supposed to open up the season against Vanderbilt. That game was canceled due to COVID concerns. South Carolina's game against Ole Miss also canceled due to COVID concerns. And here we are, they're playing each other. Look at Aaliyah Boston go down the floor. That's your 6-5 center. Getting the steal, taking it coast to coast all the way to the finish. Her game is going to be oh, fantastic before her career's over as a Gamecock. You see the timeline of how this game came to be. And Carolyn, I can bet that this is not going to be the first time this season we see teams have to shuffle around their opponent. And not only do coaches and players have to be ready to pivot, you and I have to be ready to pivot That's and right. change. Our <laughs> schedule gets changed as well. So you can't wait to the last minute to really keep an eye on what's happening across the league. Players, coaches, and us as commentators have to stay aware up to date on things. Christina Moore takes it inside and gets the foul called. Victoria Saxton is whistled for it. That just means we got to watch more basketball. I'm okay with that. I can't wait the rest of this afternoon. That's all I'm doing on this yeah. New Year's <laughs> Eve. Nina Ricard's shot is swiped away by Zaya Cook with the one hand. Florida ball. We look at Zy Cook, and she looked over to Dawn Staley. And in talking about the conversation those two had after the NC State game, Dawn Staley asked Zaya, she said, if you had made more shots, what would you do? And Zaya Cook said, take more shots. And Dawn's like, no, if you were scoring more baskets, you'd be a more willing passer. And Zaya Cook took that to heart, and that really has played dividends over their last two games. Yeah, and her offense is so important to South Carolina's offense as a whole. Well, you got to understand, defensively, teams are going to collapse on Aaliyah Boston. You, most opponents figure, if I can stop South Carolina's paint points, it gives me a chance. That means Zaya Cook has got to do some scoring from the perimeter. Shot rattles out from Briggs. Ricards on the rebound. This will be interesting. Who controls the tempo? Florida normally is a quick-paced team. They don't like to get late in the shot clock. But right now, they're taking their time. Boston got a hand on it. Goes out of bounds off of Florida. And a couple of substitutions. Leticia Mehir checks in. We saw her get the start last game for South Carolina in the place of Victoria Saxton, who we told you missed a couple of practices due to a death in the family. She has really upped her game. Ami here has this year. Ami here is playing without that knee brace, and she looks like the player that played with a lot of freedom, athleticism prior to her injury, before her freshman season. And she has, she, her game is so versatile. She can rebound, she can bring it, she can take it off the bounce. She's agile around the basket like that. Great finish by Ami here. Well, that ended a one for nine streak by South Carolina. Kiki Smith in the paint, banks it in. We'll see a lot of that from Kiki Smith because every player for the Florida Gators is a threat from the three-point line. And when the defense has to be spread out, that's when Kiki Harris can really slice and dice, taking the ball to the basket. Kiki Smith. It's Kiki Smith. So used to doing South Carolina games, and we had Kiki Herbert Harrison. <laughs> Harrigan. <laughs> Kiki Smith. 
Florida was able to step up and take the charge there. So Cam Neubauer's group will get the ball back. He's in his fourth season leading this Florida Gators crew. And you mentioned the freedom. He's kind of simplified things a little bit because he likes and trusts the personnel he has to play freely. Floor Tonders with the putback. Well, Cam Neubauer, when he coached at Belmont, he liked to run, you know, get 18 passes before he got the shot. Now he's got players he can simplify that can score when that open opportunity presents itself. Three ball short for a me here. And we'll step aside here. Early action in Columbia's SEC play has begun. South Carolina leads Florida eight to six. Cam Neubauer in his fourth season as Florida's head coach, and he's brought in some high-ranked recruits and started to change the mentality of this program as a whole. Well, Lavender Briggs told him when she decided to come to Florida, she wanted to be a difference maker. She wanted to be the main reason that this program got back to its winning ways. And when you sign a player like Jordan Merritt, this, the versatility, now this is a player that came in for the Florida Gators as a forward, and Cam Neubauer sees her as being more of a guard. She's got a beautiful stroke from the perimeter, and she, her handles aren't bad either for her size. Yeah, you got to remember, too, though, she did have a knee injury during her senior season, so she's been coming back from that, plus getting adjusted to the college game speed, but still her numbers are pretty good, averaging about 6.5 points per game for Florida. Jordan Merritt there, number 12 in blue. And she's not bashful. She doesn't play nope. like a freshman at all. Uh, she plays with great confidence on the floor. Both teams struggling to shoot it early on in this one, about 30% from the field from Florida and South Carolina. Got to shake a little bit of the rust off. It's been a while since these teams have played. Yeah, Florida hasn't played in 10 days. South Carolina hasn't played in 14 days. Kiki Smith going at Aaliyah Boston. Might be tough to do. Lily Grissett leading the break. This is Lavender Briggs. We were telling you about the All-SEC freshman team member last year. Led the team averaging 15 points per game. She's at 16 and a half this season. That rattles in and out. Zaya Cook off the glass. Best offense for South Carolina right now is pushing in transition. And really, that's the best way to get in a rhythm, get some confidence offensively, get some easy baskets in transition. Then you'll see your half-court offense start to flow a little better. South Carolina with six fast break points. They average 22 fast break points a game. Cook off the Boston screen to Grissette at the elbow. Smith will push as well. Tonders at the top of the key, in and out. Cam Neubauer is fine with her taking that shot. Aaliyah Boston misses the putback, but she's going to the line. Well, the size advantage that South Carolina has, that allows Aaliyah Boston to get the rebound, but also coming in transition, and you look, Leticia and me here really made that happen by posting up and really clearing the lane for Zaya Cook to get all the way to the basket. Kiki Smith called for her first foul, and it sends Aaliyah Boston to the free throw line. Already seven rebounds for Boston. You know, when you look at this South Carolina team, they're starting five strong, and then their next four or five players just as strong. That depth that they have, it's going to make them very dangerous throughout this season. Well, depth is going to be so important, too, because 
you don't know how COVID is going to impact your group, whether it's contact tracing or it takes one player out. So to have those people coming off the bench, that's going to be huge. You make a great point. And so in games, when you, when you as a team, you get a lead or you get an opportunity to get some experience from players that don't normally play a lot, you prepare them for exactly that. Should they be called upon because your roster has been shortened due to COVID? Well, Lily Grissette left without bringing the ball with her. It goes out of bounds, and Florida will take over. Six straight points for the Gamecocks right now. Meanwhile, Florida has missed its last six shots. Faith Dute to Briggs. Baseline. That's a shot that Briggs normally knocks down. Her mid-range is pure. She just hasn't been, been able to see it go through the hoop so far in this game. Kiki Smith touched it. It will stay with South Carolina. Florida is going to bring in Yasmin Chang, the transfer from Miami. She got eligible before Christmas when the NCAA sent down that blanket waiver for all transfers to play immediately. And she's a guard that can bring some offense. She's got extreme, exceptional athleticism and quickness, and she's a strong guard. Let me here on the block. Sees Henny waiting for the three. It's short. Letitia, me here all over that pass, but it goes out of bounds off of Florida. Well, Ami here's activity defensively. She never gets herself pinned or at the mercy of the post player. Her active, active hands, active feet, really denying the ball coming inside. Olivia Thompson. It's a two. Nope. In the previous games that I've watched of Florida, one of the things that Florida has done so well is they've had that, that center that has been able to rim run. And right now, Duke's not getting there and causing the defense to have to collapse in so that Florida can have those shooters spread around the three-point line. And Duke's just a sophomore, and she really has grown with more playing time this season. And Cam Neubauer talked about he, he has really challenged her. A lot of times she would get down on herself if she missed a shot. And now to move on to that next play and to stay aggressive. And she's done a better job of that in her sophomore season. It's a couple times Destiny Henderson has been diving out of bounds to save the ball now in the last few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Taking over the point guard duties as Ty Harris graduated and really starting to come into her own leading this South Carolina team. Saxton gives it up. Third turnover for Carolina. Faith Dude bounces out. And that's a shot Cam Neubauer wants her to take. Florida has six offensive rebounds already today. Just two second chance points. But they've really shown, especially in that last game that went over North Florida, they were all over the offensive glass. And a lot of the offensive rebounding came from the guards. You've got Nina Rickards that's crashing the boards. Daniel Rainey getting on the glass. Kiki Smith. Just got rejected by me here. Eight seconds. Ami here's shot is short. South Carolina ran out of time, plenty of chances, but still the Gamecocks lead it after 10 minutes of play here in Columbia. Don Staley's crew up 14 to six on top of Florida. SEC opener for both of these teams as South Carolina tries to defend its SEC title. Don Staley's team in front here after 10 minutes in their first SEC game of the season. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck with you. 
Florida did not score a basket in the last five minutes of that first quarter. But what Florida did do is they rebounded the basketball. They're tied with South Carolina at 16. And if they start making shots, they can make this a ball game just like that. Lavender Briggs from the three. Yeah, Lavender Briggs could definitely be key. Averages 16.6 points per game. Lily Grissett cutting to the hoop. And Cam Neubauer told us that with his defense, he was going to make certain players have to score the basketball. When you look at this South Carolina team, everybody can score. How do you yeah. determine who not to let shoot and who you're going to let score? So Lily Grissett will run the point. Not a surprise. Dawn Staley said we might see her run the point a little bit more in this game. Well, just building on Lily Grissett's skill set. You know, she's a senior. Next level is pro opportunity. So the versatility of her game, showing her handles. She, she's got high energy. She's a big rebounding guard. I like her game. Up and in from Lavender Briggs. Now she's feeling it. Just take some time for the sophomore to get settled in. But once Briggs does, she can hurt you. She can take over a ball game. It's Alyssa Weselek. Up to Briggs. The layup and go into the line. Yeah, this South Carolina, this Florida Gator basketball team has no fear. They respect every opponent, but they really have a little swagger about their game, a lot of confidence, and especially when they can push it in transition. Kim Neubauer told us Lavender Briggs, just a sophomore, but coming off that stellar freshman season, she, he said the difference was this year, she can still impact the game if her shot's not falling. And we saw that in the first quarter. Shot wasn't falling, but she still continued to try to have an effect on the game, getting on the glass, defending the basketball, and then getting the runouts in transition. Victoria Saxton, extra bounce. And going back to Briggs, now she's seen her shot go through, so watch out. Well, and you see who Don Staley put on her. Bree Beal, she always gets the assignment of the best offensive player on the opponent's team. Pulls up, off to the left. Cook hits the gas, steps through the double team, and it'll be a foul on Briggs. Briggs just late to get there. And as valuable she is to this Florida Gator team, she might have been better off to go ahead and let Zaya Cook get to the basket. Oh, excuse me, they ruled the foul on Jordan Merritt officially. Oh, that's, a, that's good for the Gators. <laughs> yeah. Not that you, you still need Jordan Merritt as well. She's another offensive threat. And they switched it back. Sorry, guys. It is on Lavender Briggs. The focus of the defense. Coming off the ball screen, you see the athleticism of, Vic of Victoria Saxton with Destiny Henderson and then gets draws the foul. Just the length of the post players for South Carolina makes their defense so good. They've got length, strength, and athleticism. I like Dawn Staley's new glasses. She's got this fancy hoodie on, too. It's got zippers on the back. Oh, yeah. She's always saw styling. In, yep, always saw styling. Cook over to me here. Offensive foul. 
Briggs steps up and takes that charge. I want to see this again. Oh, excuse me, it was Jordan Merritt. They call the foul on Merritt? They should have, because she was still moving. She had not established. It was an offensive foul on Amir. She, I don't think Jordan Merritt had established a correct defensive position. She didn't beat her to the spot. Merritt has the ball poked out by Bree Beal. That's nine turnovers now for Florida. It's just really tough to run your offense against the defense of South Carolina. Cam Newbauer talked about their speed and their strength. And it's not just on the offensive side, it's defensively as well. South Carolina ball. Danielle Rainey touched it last. So good to see her back out there in a Gator uniform. Had a knee injury in the preseason before last year and missed the entire season as Boston puts it through. One of the things I asked Don Staley about with Aaliyah Boston is early on, her field goal percentage is off. He said a lot of that is she's got to finish layup. She had a layup opportunity there in transition, didn't finish. Rainey from deep. Saxton flies in for the board. And Henderson doesn't know where to go. Boston now with eight points, eight rebounds. Ten straight points for South Carolina. Timeout called. Gamecocks lead it 26 to 13. Well, these matchups of top 15 teams start a stellar Saturday with six games on ESPN2 and the app. Two of the Big 12's best square off at noon Eastern. Number eight, Texas takes on number three, Kansas. Then we head to the Big 10 for the Luca Garza, if you will. Number 10, Iowa and Ron Harper Jr. And number 14, Rutgers face each other. Texas, by the way, only loss, of course, to Villanova by four points. That Texas-Kansas game should be fun. Yeah, Texas seven and one. You've got... Matt, Matt Coleman the third, who is leading this team, he is a phenomenal dynamic point guard that can score and just in a second, a blink of an eye, and she, he really gets the offense going for Shaka Smart's Longhorns. Do you think uh, Don Staley would like a dynamic point guard? <laughs> well, he's, she's got a couple. <laughs> yeah, she does. And coming in next year, ooh, man. They have a freshman coming in, Raven Johnson. Another she can number go. one class. Yes. Right now, South Carolina up on Florida. The Gators in a scoring drought of about three minutes. This is the number one recruiting class again that South Carolina is bringing in. They had the number one class coming into last season, and now we will see these athletes join the Gamecocks for next year. All four top 15 and signed under the COVID quarantine. Really recruited these players by phone, FaceTime. Some of them didn't really like to get into that Zoom situation, yeah. but they just <laughs> like that constant communication over time when they couldn't even come on campus to visit. Henderson over to Boston. A little range for Aaliyah Boston. She's in double figures with 10. Well, Aaliyah Boston was the unanimous national freshman of the year last season. And her game continues to expand. She's extended her range. We saw her handle the basketball. She'll try the three. Speaking of range. That's you 15 see straight Cook, when, points. 
you see Zaya Cook, she delivered the pass, put up the three-point symbol like, big girl, let it fly, let it go. And Aaliyah Boston knocked it down. The third three-pointer by Aaliyah Boston this season. Look, all these freshmen for South Carolina who were so impactful last year, now they're sophomores. They've had to add to their game because you know what they bring to the floor now. The scout is out on them. But check out Zaya Cook. She gets in the paint, and then look, three. She did direct directing traffic. She's telling the big girl, let it go. I got confidence in that shot, and Aaliyah Boston knocked it down. But you were talking about, Courtney, of what each one has added to their game. So Zaya Cook decision-making. Aaliyah Boston has extended her range. Bree Bill becoming not just a defender, but an offensive threat on the floor. And you just see the freedom that Letitia Ami here is playing with without having that knee brace. I mean, all four of those freshmen have improved. Nina Ricards with the steal and the score. Austin just turns around and shoots it. Yeah, I would too. She's got post patience. Even when she's at the elbow and not on the block, she was patient, let the cut happen, read how the defense was guarding her, and then knocked it down. Christina Moore steps back. This is the only freshman, Anaya Russell, number two in white for South Carolina. Boston for two. Heat check. <laughs> That's With okay, she's got Victoria Saxon down there. There you go, absolutely. Cards kicks to Moore for three. Got it. She's one of their top shooters. And you saw Don Staley. She didn't like that on the sideline. On the scouting report, it clearly states that Christina Moore is a three-point shooter. You can't leave, leave her. And the thing that opened that up is allowing middle penetration. When that help has to come off a shooter, the shooter on the backside is going to be wide open. Hopefully that'll spark Florida a little bit as South Carolina's starting to find their flow. Well, you see the middle penetration and the freshman, Russell, she bit in to help on penetration, came off the shooter. That's what Don Staley was upset about. Chang was trying to hit her cards and she sent it in a little too early. It goes out of bounds. So timeout called. Hey, here's our women's basketball doubleheader for you. It's next Thursday, so a week from today. We're hoping that Tennessee will be back on the court for this one. They did have a positive COVID test and then quarantining within the program that paused activities. They're slated to square off against 10th ranked Arkansas in Knoxville at 6.30 Eastern. Then that would be followed by Kentucky and Texas A&M, a top 25 battle. Hey, Arkansas and Kentucky are actually playing later tonight on the SEC Network on, at 8.30. That should be a really fun game. You got Chelsea Dungy going against Ryan Howard. That whole Thursday, though, is going to be star-studded. You're going to get to see great games the rest of this afternoon, but on that Thursday, all four teams are bringing stars. You got Renaya Davis and Ray Burrell playing well for the Lady Vols. Can't wait to do that one. That'll be you and, you and me. Yeah. We were supposed to have Tennessee and Texas A&M tonight. That got canceled due to those positive tests within Tennessee. And also Tennessee's game against Kentucky on Sunday has been postponed. Well, in Texas A&M, India Jones, Aaliyah Wilson, Sierra Johnson. You can just go on and on and on. And get, getting Zay Green now eligible to play. Christmas just got brighter <laughs> for Gary <Yeah>. Blair at <laughs> College Station. He got Alexis a 30 to go in the half. Eligible. Briggs with the long ball. 
Rebound by Henderson. You see more. She's really staying in the paint off of Victoria Saxton. Ten seconds on the shot clock for Carolina. Boston. Rebound by Grissett, gets it blocked. It'll stay with South Carolina. Man, Aaliyah Boston, by the way, Carolyn already has a double-double. And I like the confidence. There's no question. Her freshman year, when on the face-up jump shot, I could see where there's a little doubt, unsure. Now she shows a lot of confidence and recognize when she's open, she's looking for that shot. Boston also just four points away from the 500th point of her career. When you look at what it does for South Carolina's offense, when you have Aaliyah Boston who can step away from the basket, even knocking down and having to be respected at the three-point line, it allows players like Lily Grissett, Lily Grissett or Bree Beal as big guards to go inside and post up. Lavender Briggs just picked up her second foul. 36 seconds to go in the quarter. Yeah, she's confident. Yeah, no hesitation whatsoever. I love it from your 6'5 center that can score right there easily from the free throw line area. 20 seconds for Florida. They haven't scored in almost three minutes. Danielle Rainey. Won't go. Okay. okay, 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 big girl. And knew how much time was on the clock. I love it, Aaliyah Boston. Oh, and with the wink. <laughs> Do it with some style, big girl. I love it, bringing it down, countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, that's good for the big girl leading the break. <laughs> South Carolina. Leads it at the half behind a double-double already from Aaliyah Boston. She's got 19 and 11. Carolina leads it 39 to 18 here in Columbia. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Halftime here in Columbia, South Carolina leads at 39 to 18 over Florida first SEC game of the season. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck with you. We've been talking about how these teams have had to prepare and how everything is so different during COVID and game prep is totally different, Carolyn. Coaching staffs have got to do advanced scouting. Head coaches have to assign their assistant coaches to be prepped to be able to pull the trigger if the games get switched. And in practice, you're teaching concepts and really covering common offenses. And it's important to have depth. So you make sure players 1 through 15, if you have that many, get rotations. Because of COVID, you don't know when you may be shorthanded. Yeah, and that's what both of these teams were not expecting to play each other tonight. They had other opponents on the schedule, and then they had to make that quick pivot. It's also, though, making sure the mentality of your team is okay. This is a lot to deal with for these teams. Florida head coach Cam Newbauer, they've put in a ton of work, but also they've tried to have a little bit of fun, too, and that included a visit to Carson Springs Wildlife Conservation over the Christmas holiday, just a chance for the team's families, the players to get out, get away from basketball for a second and just be together in a safe way. Well, he said that when Cam Neubauer had prepared for Vanderbilt, and he said that was in the barn. He thought that's who they were going to play, but when it changed to where they were going to play South Carolina, he did not change the plan to taking his team to this wildlife conservation because he felt it was important. Look, it was going to be social distance and you were going to be able to be outside. First half of basketball between these two teams. This is how the numbers look. South Carolina winning the rebounding battle, but points in the paint. Carolina thrives in that area. 26 points in the paint for the Gamecocks. How about Zaya Cook for South Carolina to come out and kind of set the tone for this team? 
Well, she has really done a terrific job of knowing when to call her home number and know when she needs to score and keep it herself and make it happen, or when she needs to find her open teammates, get an even better shot. She did a fantastic job with the first half. She, fought, she found Aaliyah Boston a couple of times that time inside, this time outside, and even gave the signal. She has the confidence in the big girl to knock down the three-point shot. Leah Boston was terrific. A double-double already. 19 points just in the first half. And I'd love to see how her game has expanded. She can put the ball on the deck. She can score. She can shoot the three. And her presence of mind in, to end the half, <laughs> to get that finish before the clock ran out, her maturity on the court is unreal. Yeah, Leah Boston took it the length of the court and put up a little jumper right as the buzzer sounded to end the half. So already a double-double, as we mentioned, for her 19 points, 11 rebounds. She has 500 points now for her career. And the one thing that Florida has got to do is they've got to make these mid-range shots or either shots from the three because it's going to be tough for the Florida Gators to score in the paint against the size and strength of South Carolina. They get an offensive foul on Bree Beal. We've been keeping an eye on the paint. Carolyn, obvious, for obvious reasons, South Carolina gets so many points there. They're shooting 52% in the paint during this game. They forced Florida to shoot it outside of the paint, hitting only 19% though. When you look 25 shots for South Carolina in the paint, that's what Don Staley's looking for. Now, Cam Neubauer wants to be more efficient, wants his players. Look, you get open shots, you got to knock them down because when you get in the paint, that's what's going to happen. Your shot's going to get blocked. South Carolina is just too big. Boston going to the free throw line. I love to watch the evolution of Aaliyah Boston's game. She now recognizes more times than not in the paint, she is going to get a double team, and she's learning to go score quick before the double team gets there. As she told us during the COVID shutdown, she went back home to St. Thomas and just was in the gym pretty much every day working on her range, working on her shot, and you can see that in her confidence. You have players that love to work. And that's what Don Staley has with these Gamecocks. They love to be in the gym. There's Lavender Briggs, gets in trouble, kicks back out to Tonders. Kiki Smith, there you go. Smith just had two points in that first half. She's their team leader at 16.8 points per game. In the last couple of games that we've watched, Florida play they've been able to get points too with offensive rebounds they have not been as fortunate that's become few and far between like the shot Smith got Christina Moore picks up her first foul for Florida and sends Victoria Saxton to the free throw line a 64 percent free throw shooter Pressure coming out on Florida this time. Bree Beal is all over Kiki Smith, and it pays off. Florida ball. Just the finishing of the layups, but South Carolina changed up their defense that time, went zone, and that really shows the confidence that you feel like you have this game in hand because when you have a team that can shoot the ball the way the Florida Gators can and you dare to go a zone, you feel like you have taken a team out of their rhythm. Nina Ricards, 4 3. Maybe they're not out of the rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> Ricards might always be in rhythm. She does so many different things for Florida. What a skill set to have. And recognizing, too, 
Rebill reached in. Rickards stayed out and was able to knock down the three. There's Victoria Saxton with two defenders on her. That's got to take some of the pressure off of Leah Boston, too, to have another threat down low like Saxton. Well, you've got Saxon, you have Leticia Emma here that can come in and play at the post. All three, those three rotation in the post, they definitely, you know, can bring a lot of offense. There's Emma here. This is Nina Ricards at the line. Cam Neubauer told us she's just a no ego type of player. We'll do whatever you need and we'll keep shooting even though that shot's not falling. It's not going to affect the rest of her game. Well, she's such a crafty guard. She had 18 against Florida State. And really, it's her skill set, the versatility of things that she can do gives her a lot of confidence. So if one aspect of her game's not going, she knows she has another one she can go to. Tisha, me here in the paint, kicks to Beal for the three. South Carolina's only hit one three, and it was by Aaliyah Boston. See, that's how Florida scores, too. You miss a shot, they're looking to get out in transition. Off missed shots and turnovers. Two from Aaliyah Boston. Too easy. Could she be any more confident right now? It's a good sign for South Carolina when she is. More fast break points for the Gamecocks. They now have 10. When the schedule changed, Cam Neubauer said, <laughs> Merry Christmas to the Florida Gators. They thought they were going to play Florida or play Vanderbilt first because the schedule doesn't get any easier for the Florida Gators and who they've got next. Three ranked opponents coming at them. That's a fun way to, you thought 2021 was going to get better, right? It's supposed to be better than 2020. Well, I tell you with the ranked teams, if I'm Cam, I'd rather play them early before they hit their stride later in late February, you know, early March. Mm -hmm. It'll be out of bounds off of Florida, so South Carolina will get to keep it. Yeah, this is Florida's upcoming schedule, a ranked Texas A&M team, a ranked Mississippi State team. Georgia's receiving votes, and then, of course, Arkansas also has a number next to its name. So that's it's not easy. I've been in that situation where you've got ranked team after ranked team, and the thing as a coach you've got to do is Make sure your team doesn't lose their confidence. You gotta find the things that you've done well and carry that from one game to the next. Now, no guarantees too that the schedule we showed you is actually how it's gonna pan out though, because in, in this time of COVID, things could change quickly just like they did for this game. No question, but South Carolina was supposed to play Ole Miss and I'm interested to see Ole Miss play because in the SEC, they're number two in scoring Number one in allowed points for opponents. They're number one in assists, number one in steals. So, Yolette McPhee, McEwen, McEwen has really done a nice job with the transfers that have come in, putting the pieces together. I can't wait to see Ole Miss compete now in the SEC. Lily Grissett from long range. Under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. First SEC game for both of these teams. Danielle Rainey. See, those are shots Florida could have gotten in the first half. They played a little tight, did a little bit too much dribbling, I thought, instead of moving the ball with the pass, make the defense have to shift. Cook pulls up, it's short. Aaliyah Boston will try to help her out, it's short. They called a foul. So 
So we'll step aside here. South Carolina on top 49 to 33 here in the third quarter. Ooh, starting tomorrow at four, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch those two semifinal games. We've got Alabama who wants to play fast and Notre Dame who's going to try to slow things down. I don't know if you can do that with Devontae Smith going against the corners of Notre Dame. Just too much speed right there. And then with the Clemson, Ohio State, I'm still, I'm just going to say it. If Trevor Lawrence is being penalized and not going to be an option for the Heisman, you can't do that. Ohio State didn't get penalized for missing games because of COVID. They played six games, but they're in the they're in the playoffs. So Trevor Lawrence should be an option to win the Heisman. I'm just saying it. I'm just putting it out there. Alabama has two finalists for the Heisman. Meanwhile, Mac Jones and Devontae Smith, of course. Najee Harris was a... Uh, just outside of that, but should be a lot of fun to watch those games tomorrow. Oh, absolutely. Well, South Carolina and Florida battling here in their first SEC games of the season. The Gators have kind of turned things around here in the third quarter. It's been a stronger start for Cam Newbauer's group than we saw in that first half. They're outscoring Florida right now 17 to 10 in the third quarter. When we saw Don Staley having a long conversation with her crew in that timeout, I think a lot of it had to do with the transition baskets that Florida was able to score easily, getting a rebound and getting down the court. You shouldn't, you, know, you can't clock, you start, start clock watching and getting beat back in transition. Yasmin Chang, she was also just called for the foul. Rainey pulls up. See a lot of dribbling for the Florida Gators. They're trying to run a dribble drive where you, you really read and react off each other, but the ball handler on the drive has got to keep their head up and recognize, can you create, make two guard one and then make that extra pass? Olivia Thompson is going to sub in for Lily Grissett. Cook in the corner. Ami here, offensive rebound, offensive foul. It's the third time she's been called for an offensive foul today. As a coach, I don't mind it. I would rather my post players being aggressive. She battled inside and then take the ball to the rim. Now she did lower her shoulder and she's got to really understand and learn to do it all one motion because if you give the shove and then get into your shot, that's what the officials are going to call. Chang. Off the front of the iron, rebound by Thompson. Pass is deflected by Rainey. Here we'll take a seat. Victoria Saxton back in the game. Florida has brought in Emily Sullivan along with Cindy, Kin Cindy Kinslow. Rainey from the far side, and Danielle Rainey hits for a second time from downtown. Saxon's got to finish that. Henderson found her running in transition. You got to pay that off. Briggs at the elbow. Florida's doing a much better job here in the third quarter. Now they've outscored South Carolina 22 to 14 in the third quarter. Oh, 
just wonder if the focus has really dropped off for South Carolina. We were able to watch them warm up. They were out there a little over two hours before game time out on the court and now not pushing as fast in transition, not as fast as Florida is able to get up and down the floor. Florida has made nine of its last 11 shots. They were trailing by 22 points early on in this quarter. Look at the way that Florida can shoot the three. South Carolina cannot sit back and think, I've got a 13 point lead, this game is over. Because with the ability that the Gators have of knocking down a three point shot, they could get right back in this ball game. They've hit five threes already today. Briggs kicks it to the freshman, Jordan Merritt. She can do it too. That's what I'm telling you right now. They've cut it to a 10 point game. South Carolina not shooting the three well today. One for 10. That one coming from Aaliyah Boston. Eight seconds. Cook for two. Cook seems to find an answer, but as Florida gets their offense flowing and get more confidence, you're going to see Florida's defense pack in the paint deeper and deeper and force South Carolina to score from the perimeter. Sullivan on the rebound, taken away by Boston, and here comes the transition game for the Gamecocks. Jump ball, South Carolina has the possession arrow. I can tell you one thing that's going to be on the practice film for tomorrow is missed layups for South Carolina. They have missed time after time layups, point blank range right around the rim. Cook, almost the same spot. Mid-range is pure. Meanwhile, Florida has scored 25 points in this quarter. That is the most South Carolina has given up in any quarter this season. Christina Moore. And she's going to the line. 13.3 seconds left in the third quarter. Christina Moore trying to complete the three-point play. Look, the Gators, this game's not over. They continue to compete, driving inside, are finding angles, really turning the edge and able to drive down the middle. And then nice finish. That's that mentality to us about. Bringing in players like Lavender Briggs and Jordan Merritt, they bring that we want to win mentality. We're seeing it right now from the Gators, eight seconds. They can hold for the last shot of the quarter. It's Ricards. Gets two. The energy is with the Florida Gators right now. Nina Ricards, as the clock is running down, she brings the Gators within 10. We're in for a good one in this fourth quarter coming up. And what a third quarter it was for Florida. They started they that ran. quarter trailing by 22 points and cut the lead to 10. Well, I think they started building confidence, running in transition. Then they started hitting a couple of shots from the perimeter, and things just kept going well for the Florida Caters. 29 points for Florida compared to 18 points for South Carolina in that quarter. The most points scored against South Carolina in any quarter this season. And when you need a bucket, like you go to Zaya Cook. It looks like 
Florida is trying to play a triangle in two and keeping up with Zaya Cook, but Zaya Cook still one on one. She's making it happen. Well, she's got 22 points. Look at the block from Victoria Saxton. Saxton's timing of blocking shots. It's just a beautiful thing. And her extension, her reach is outstanding. And South Carolina has nine blocks. Victoria Saxton with two. 59-47 is your score. And Christina Moore is fouled by Aaliyah Boston. And I just love the, the energy that we saw from Florida in that third quarter. Oh, yeah. And when you see the difference between Victoria Saxon's blocking of shots and Aaliyah Boston, Victoria Saxon's block is up at the top. Aaliyah Boston starts to come down. And she's got to, I, I think Aaliyah needs to watch Victoria a little bit, take a few notes of watching the ball on the release and then go after the ball instead of while it's still in the hands of the shooter. the third foul on Boston and Christina Moore sinks that shot. <laughs> Offensive foul on Zaya Cook, Christina Moore again. Well, and that's where Zaya Moore, Zaya Cook has got to recognize she had Destiny Henderson open on the wing. She forced the issue there, and Christina Moore did a terrific job. Ow! Oh, I don't know if she was set. She went over and set her defensive position, but Zaya Cook had already left the floor. Kiki Smith's shot rolls out. Tonders and Ricards on the rebound to the corner. Too much from Smith. And he pushes and kicks to a waiting Cook. Look at Victoria Saxton swooping in. Rebounding. That's going to make the difference for you in ball games. South Carolina with 18 offensive rebounds. 15 second chance points. Destiny Henderson attacking but then you watch Victoria Saxon doesn't give up the play. Did you see where she came from to get that offensive rebound? No quick in Saxon's game. Basically up in the stands. <laughs> Ran down real quick. She's got nine points and ten rebounds. Austin immediately triple teamed. He'll try her again. Gunshot. a foul underneath. To watch Bria Bill had three different opportunities to shoot the basketball because the Florida defense is playing off of her, but she was determined to get the ball into Aaliyah Boston. She spotted her space back out once the ball went inside, but she wasn't ready to pull the trigger when the ball came back to her. Christina Moore called for her second foul. Henderson turns around. The three has not been South Carolina's friend. They're one for 13. Meanwhile, Florida trailed by 22 points at the beginning of the third quarter. They've tried to chip away. Kenny doesn't mind the contact. She concentrated and focused on the finish. That's South Carolina has really struggled with finishing layups. It'll be Carolina ball. Under seven to go. South Carolina led at the half behind a double-double in the first half alone from Aaliyah Boston.
She already has a career high today of 22 points. You can add 15 rebounds to her stat line. But then Florida charged back in that third quarter. But where South Carolina has been able to maintain the difference and the distance is rebounding. They are out rebounding Florida right now, 33 to 46, and they have 18 offensive rebounds. 15 second chance points. Lavender Briggs traveled. Cam Neubauer's trying to set that up. He brought Jordan Merritt over on the baseline on the same side of the floor as Lavender Briggs. He wanted that penetration in, help off Jordan Merritt to get that three in the corner. I would look to him to go back next possession. Florida has turned it over 20 times now. They only average about 12 turnovers a game. Destiny Henderson whistled for the foul. Courtney, you talked about South Carolina, one of 14 from the three-point line. That's not the strength of the South Carolina Gamecocks, and uh, there's not a lot of movement in the offense. It's become a game of horse. Kiki Smith pulls it back out for Florida. And Victoria Saxton says, you can't come in here. You see Bree Bill's not even looking for a shot. Lavender Briggs is staying practically in the paint off of her. Henderson will take the shot at the elbow. Why is Beal not looking for a shot? I think she's gotten gun shy. She's missed some shots early and has lost confidence. And I think she has been told, you know, get the ball inside first. But once you have, you've got to at least be a threat and look at the basket when you catch it. The timeout is called by Florida. They're down 13 here, just over five minutes to go in Columbia. New banner in the rafters here at Colonial Life Arena. A unanimous number one ranking to end last season for South Carolina. And now there's a banner up on the ceiling. So everybody knows and remembers what a great season it was for the Gamecocks last year. Well, when things were shut down due to COVID and not allowed or not able to have the NCAA tournament, very disappointing season for a lot of athletes. If I would have told you that Aaliyah Boston would have the only three-pointers made for South Carolina today, <laughs> would you believe me before this game? Look, with everything else that's happened in 2020, yes. No. <laughs> Boston is two for four from behind the arc. South Carolina is two for 15 from behind the arc. They seem to have got back on track here in the fourth quarter after Florida outscored them 29 to 18 in the third quarter. We'll step aside one more time. 4.33 left in Columbia. Gamecocks on top. Back in Columbia, Carolina, on top of Florida, 66 to 50. 4.33 to play in this first conference game of the season for both teams. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck with you. Lavender Briggs will pull up on the baseline. She's got 19. Well, I'll tell you, South Carolina has got to be on their toes because this is a Florida team that can be streaky. They can get hot from the perimeter. They cut it to 10. Could they do it again, get it into single digits in this last four minutes? This is definitely a Florida team that looks different than we've seen in years past under Cam Neubauer. Very organized and uh, a threat of scoring at all five spots on the floor. Lavender Briggs especially. Up to 21. OK, 
cut it to 12. South Carolina has going to have to take time, use the clock, and be efficient with their scoring options. Beal thought about driving, just still looks hesitant to shoot. Yeah, it was a second thought. It's got to be, she's got to work to have the confidence of catching, before she catches it, know that she's an option to shoot the basketball. There you go, Bree Beal. I just want Bree Beal to have as much confidence in her offensive game as she does in her defensive game. She truly believes and has demonstrated she can defend anybody in the country. That's really what got her in the starting lineup last year as a freshman. It wasn't her offense. It was everything else she was doing for the South Carolina team. Well, she was an offensive player coming out of high school and really accepted the role of being a defensive player once she came to college. Now she's just got to really transfer the work that she puts in in practice to having that confidence of knocking down shots and understanding when it is her time to shoot it and when not, when the game, when the lights come on. The foul was called on Bree Beal that sent Briggs to the line. You know, we talk about, we covered a lot of South Carolina's games last year. And we talk a lot and laughed about Mad Kiki. She brought that yeah. attitude to the team, <laughs> the toughness. And when I talk to different players at South Carolina, like, I ask them, well, who is that now? And the majority of them point to Bree Bill. She's that player that can bring that attitude, that toughness to the court. Just want her to have that kind of dog mentality on the offensive side as much as she does defensively. That's going to make a big difference when South Carolina gets into tough games. Man, Aaliyah Boston has three threes, what? Get used to it, ladies and gentlemen. It is part of her repertoire. She had two threes this season coming into the game. Just adding to that career high, 28 points for Boston, 16 rebounds. Well, it changes the scouting report on South Carolina where you thought you could pack it in the paint. Well, you won't be packing it in the paint if they can move Aaliyah Boston outside the three-point line. Zaya Cook to the rack and draws the foul on Ricards. And when it comes back up to her at the top, no hesitation. She knows how she's going to catch it and step right into it, get those feet set, and knock it down. Boston had four career three-pointers before today, and she has three today. You seem so amazed, Courtney Lyle. I love it. I just love her. The whole her, today has been summed up by that play right before the half. She went the length of the floor, drove the ball, pulled up, shot the jumper, turned to the bench, and gave him a wink. That has been Leah Boston's day. That made Timeout. my day. Timeout is called by South Carolina, under two minutes to go in Columbia. Minute 51 to play in the SEC opener for Florida and South Carolina. Gamecocks up 73-56 to by a career day for Aaliyah Boston, where she can do no wrong, basically. <laughs> And it was a quick turnaround. Again, this was supposed to be South Carolina versus Ole Miss or Florida versus Vanderbilt. So these teams had a shortened scout time. I'm not sure Aaliyah Boston shooting threes was on the scouting report for the Florida Gators. She's the only one that's been able to hit a three for South Carolina tonight. Zaya Cook has 26 points. Her career high is 27. We talked about her improvement since that loss in NC State. She has kept her foot on the gas. You can see the improvement of the South Carolina team as a whole since that NC State game. Well, they, they, it was an opportunity where they had to learn to trust each other. They had to learn to play without Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan. And that maturity and the 
camaraderie has been, you can see it coming together. Fresh 20 seconds for Carolina. They'll send it up to Zaya Cook. South Carolina with two players with over 20 points. Cook is one of those. Dominated the glass this evening. 51 rebounds for South Carolina. They are third in the nation in rebounds per game as the three goes in for Florida. Kiki Smith. South Carolina is going to pick up where it left off in the SEC last season, starting 1-0. Remember, they didn't lose an SEC game last year. South Carolina the gets the win over Florida, 75-58. to They've had the opportunity to correct some things since that NC State game. We talked about how things have come together, and Zaya Cook is a big reason of that. Her decision-making from the perimeter at the one or the two spot has really been beneficial for the Gamecocks. Yeah, she really got Aaliyah Boston involved, helped Boston get a career-high 28 points today and 16 rebounds, and that double-double came in the first half, Carolyn. You love the threes, big girl. I love the threes. Make it rain all season long. Put them up. <laughs> South Carolina defeats Florida in their first SEC game of the season. The Gamecocks take it 75 to 58. Next up for South Carolina, they'll face Alabama on Monday. Meanwhile, Florida has Texas A&M on Sunday. Gamecocks victorious in Columbia tonight. A win over the Gators to start off SEC play.